God's love has been poured into our hearts. We dwell in him and he in us. Alleluia. Welcome to morning prayer for 14 November, the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. It's wonderful to have you with us. And let us pray together. Timeless one, you create all moments of our lives giving each its meaning and its purpose. Strengthen us to witness continually to the love of Jesus Christ so that we may hold fast in times of trial, even to the ends of ages. Amen. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. O come, let us worship. Let us say the colic together. God, you gather a people you call your own. Confirm us in the strength of your abiding word and stay our hearts in the time of trial so that on the day of the Son of Man, we may without fear rejoice to behold his appearing. We ask this through Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from Maccabees. At that time, many who were seeking righteousness and justice went down to the wilderness to live there. They, their sons, their wives, and their livestock, because trouble pressed heavily upon them. And it was reported to the king's officers and to the troops in Jerusalem, the city of David, that those who had rejected the king's command had gone down to the hiding places in the wilderness. Many pursued them and overtook them. They encamped opposite them and prepared for battle against them on the Sabbath day. They said to them, Enough of this. Come out and do what the king commands, and you will live. But they said, We will not come out nor will we do what the king commands and so profane the Sabbath day. Then the enemy quickly attacked them, but they did not answer them or hurl a stone at them or block up their hiding places, for they said, Let us all die in our innocence. Heaven and earth testify for us that you are killing us unjustly. So they attacked them on the Sabbath, and they died with their wives and children and livestock, to the number of a thousand people. When Mathathias and his friends learned of it, they mourned for them deeply, and all said to their neighbors, If we all do as our kindred have done. 
and refuse to fight with the Gentiles for our lives and for our ordinances, they will quickly destroy us from the earth. So they made that, this decision that day. Let us fight against anyone who comes to attack us on the Sabbath day. Let us not all die as our kindred died in their hiding places. Then there united with them a company of Hasidians, mightily warriors of Israel, all who offered themselves willingly for the law, and all who became fugitives to escape their troubles, joined them and reinforced them. Now the days drew near for Matthias to die, and he said to his sons, Arrogance and scorn have now become strong. It is a time of ruin and furious anger. Now, my children, show zeal for the law and give your lives for the covenant of our ancestors. The word of the Lord. This morning's psalm is number 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest, God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Amen. A reading from Acts. There we found some brothers and sisters who invited us to speak a week with them, to spend a week with them. And so we came to Rome. The brothers and sisters there had heard that we were coming and they traveled as far as the Forum of Hapius and the Three Taverns to meet us. At the sight of these people, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. When we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier to guard him. Three days later, he called together the local Jew Jewish leaders. When they had assembled, Paul said to them, My brothers, Although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. They examined me and wanted to release me because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death. The Jews objected, so I was compelled to make an appeal to Caesar. I certainly did not intend to bring any charge against my own people. For this reason, I have asked to see you and talk with you. Because it is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. And they replied, We have not received any letters from Judea concerning you, and none of our people have come from there, has reported or said anything bad about you. But we want to hear what your views are, for we know that people everywhere are talking against this sect. They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying. He witnessed to them from morning till evening, explaining about the kingdom of God and the law of Moses. And the, from the prophets, he tried to persuade them about Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, Opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? 
And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is another day, O Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these words more than words, and give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. And this prayer was in a daily devotion which I received earlier this past week. I'll start off with one word, <clears throat> scooped. C-O-O-P-E-D, scooped. What does that bring to mind? Scooping ice cream or mashed potatoes or potato salad, scooping, bringing things in close, as Edward has just suggested. I had my reflection planned until I looked at an article posted on Facebook yesterday afternoon, and I realized that I had been scooped. I learned that meaning from a friend of mine who is a filmmaker. That's when a film is being produced and another company comes up with the same idea, usually from a different perspective, but on the same topic. And journalists use this word as well. You can imagine panic, big time panic, and less than a day to change what I had planned. I had planned to concentrate on climate change continuing on from last week, using the changes that are happening in Old Crow and what they as a community of 250 strong, and that includes babies and children, are doing about it. And Reverend Burt had sent this to me earlier in the week and I thought this is perfect, just absolutely perfect. I can't wait to share this. And then it's like, what? On Facebook? Now? Instead, I will do my best and do something else. And so I'll send it out to you, this, in an article. And the hard copy I will put on the bulletin board in the main entrance. So let's revisit the gospel. Just a part of it. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. These were Jesus' words about 2,000 years ago. How do these words impact us today? Floods, landslides, hurricanes, cyclones, volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, forest fires, wildfires, tornadoes, monsoons, famines, droughts, crop failure, infestations, pandemics, staggering numbers of refugees throughout the world with no home, 
a lack of potable water, and that is clean drinking water, people living in war-torn regions and countries. <coughs> Meteorologists predict the weather, and many of us pay attention to their predictions in order to be ready for what is about to come. It is recommended by the Nova Scotia Power that we should all have an emergency kit which we should keep supplied year-round. We have heard about the rapture and some years ago it was the talk. I don't know about you, but I've not heard about it lately. And this was an end time for all Christian believers who were living along with resurrected believers will rise in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And the idea of a rapture currently defined is not outlined in most Christian beliefs. Anyone who has survived floods, landslides, earthquakes, etc., had been known to say they thought that it was the end of the world. And I have a very good neighbor, and he frequently lists a variety of events which to him indicates the end of time. And he has been saying this to me for many years. I can remember when growing up, my foster father was a linesman with the Digby County Power Board. That was at least over 60 years ago. It usually happened in the summer, big thunderstorms that caused power outages. And it meant that daddy would have to go to work in that storm. Mom would get us all up out of our beds and we had to put on our rubber boots just in case. And it was always terrifying We'd get back to bed once the storm was over and Daddy was back at home, safe and sound. But I can tell you, each time there was a loud crack of thunder shaking the house and the room lit up with lightning, it seemed as if it would never end. We were thankful to have survived another storm, but I can tell you that a winter thunderstorm was far worse. Jesus spoke to, to, his, to four of his disciples about the destruction of the earth as we know it over 2,000 years ago. And the earth is still providing a livelihood for most of its inhabitants today. However, we must take good care of the earth if we expect it to continue to support human life. People who have survived these life-threatening events talk about thinking that this was definitely the end of the world. The climate change conference has ended and there does not appear to be any significant change. On my way to an appointment yesterday, I witnessed a middle-aged woman walking through a crosswalk, wheeling a garbage can with one hand and picking up garbage with the other using one of those grabbers and I don't know its proper name, so I'll just call it a grabber. She lost something that she had picked up, and in spite of being in the middle of the crosswalk, she took her time to go back and get that piece of garbage, still holding on to the garbage can because there was a slight incline, and if she had let go, that thing would have been careening along. And there were many cars stopped at each of the three sections. Amazingly, no one tooted their horn to hurry her along. We all waited respectfully, I think, until she had reached the other side. While watching her, I wondered what made her take on this task, visible to all. She was teaching us a lesson. I had no idea if she was in her neighborhood or not, but I admired her for her act of commitment. Just think about this one. Construction took place this summer and early fall on Mount Edward Road. And in preparation for the work, Two or three mature trees, big trees, were cut down. And can you believe this? New trees have been planted in their place. What, you say? There must be a reasonable explanation, although a reason for this is not clear. And residents in other parts of the municipality and throughout the province have witnessed similar acts. What can be done? We as individuals make big plans, days, weeks, months in advance, 
as if we will live forever. It is great that we in this part of the world do not live in fear. We have heard Jesus' words, and from time to time, we may think, speak about the end of time, but we go on with our daily lives. Jesus, I am certain, did not say those words to put fear in our hearts, as that is not the way he has taught. It is a reminder that the predicted time will come. In the meantime, we have his other words to guide us in our daily lives. So let's concentrate on living peaceably as well as being good stewards of this earth as it is our earthly home and it is our responsibility to look after it, to do our best as individuals to slow climate change. <clears throat> Pages. This is another day, O Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these words more than words, and give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Edie, for that very stirring uh, meditation. Please let us turn to an affirmer affirmation of our faith with the Apostles' Creed. And together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus, his, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
And let us say the offertory prayer together. God, our sustainer, accept all we offer you this day and feed us continually with that bread which satisfies all hunger. For your Son, Je Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. From Litany number seven. Let us pray in faith to God our Father and to his Son, Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. Lord, Lord hear and have mercy. mercy. For the Church of the living God throughout the world and all who minister for us, let us ask the riches of his grace. We pray, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who proclaim the word of truth, let us ask the infinite wisdom of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all those who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God, and for all struggling to follow the ways of Christ, let us ask the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, hear and have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, and for the Prime Minister of this country, and for all who govern the nations, that they shall do so responsibly, that they may also strive for justice and peace. Let us ask the strength of God. Lord, hear and have mercy. For scholars and research workers, that their studies may benefit humanity. Let us ask the light of the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray, Lord, for all those who are sick and suffering, both physically and mentally, and for everyone who loves them, and for everyone who looks after them. In our parish community today, we pray for Kendra, Nora, Simon, and Kira, for May, Gloria Jean, Lisa, for Nancy Warbeck, for Margaret, for Jillian and Kathy, for Jean and Nancy, for Mabina, for Bill C and Bill D, for Sandy, for Jane, for Beth R, as she goes through her cancer treatments, for Kim S, for Kathy, for Stephen S, and any others you may wish to name aloud or in the silence of your heart. Lord, hear and have mercy. And for all those who have passed from this life in faith and obedience, let us ask the peace of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Tom Clark has asked that we announce the thank you from the food bank organizers they are pleased and amazed with our donations based on the size of our congregation. So thank you, one and all. Also, we are getting closer to the time for the gift bags of personal care items, along with some, some treats for the adults who are assisted by the food bank. There's also the mitten tree to think about, as well as the angel tree. We are in the hopes of having an in-person service the last Sunday in this month, which is the 28th just two weeks away. That would be the time to bring your gift bags. We will get a list of suggestions from Tom and we'll send it out to you. And you will be called regarding your attendance on the 28th. Our offering donations have been very slow in making their way to our deposit. We still have expenses, ongoing expenses, power, water, heat, salaries, office supplies, sanitizing materials, and your donation can be dropped off in the vestry mail slot, mailed to the church, and I will include the address, the mailing address again when I send out some other things, and or dropped off during office hours, or given to a church friend to bring it to you, or you can go on par. 
Joanne, our administrative assistant, has that information about PAR so you could inquire. We do not want to worry about struggling to keep our doors open. We want to be able to worship as a faith family in this building for as long as we possibly can, and we need your financial commitment to do so. Parish Council will be meeting this Tuesday at 1.30 p.m., and it will be an in-person meeting where we will wear our masks, social distance, use hand sanitizer, and adhere to all the other protocols. Martha has made a big dent in cleaning our kitchen for future use. Thank you so much, Martha. There are many house plants for sale, and you'll hear more about that in the next few weeks. This morning, we thank Edward Barnstead for his time, his talent, his dedication. And he is the one behind the recording. You don't get to see him, you get to see us. But you see his finished product, which takes a lot of time to produce before he sends it off to Marianne, who then makes it available to you on Sunday mornings. I also thank everyone who participated in today's recording, and thank you to each of you for your participation in tuning in. Martha, Edward, Colin, Marianne and I are doing our utmost best to continue with these services to the best of our ability in the way Reverend Robert would have have them prepared, recorded, and delivered. And he was able to find our individual talents and coax them along and coax us too. May he continue to rest in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness, working in us what pleases him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.